Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about bags in the pre-love market that I'm obsessed with and those that I would be interested in buying. These are bags that have already been discontinued and are not available to purchase in store anymore. They may be vintage or some may have been available just a few years ago but have since then been phased out. So all of these bags you would only be able to access through the pre-love market. These are bags that you can get pre-loved at great deals but I think are still very fashionable and I think are still very wearable to match today's trend. But before anything else, if you're new here, welcome, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. If these are the kinds of videos that you like watching, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to connect with me and my socials, it's at TrishDLM. So I wanted to do this video because I am an advocate of the pre-loved market, and I am constantly scouting the pre-loved market for the best deal. And throughout my journey of regularly scouting the pre-love market, these are some of the bags that I found at good deals and are still very wearable up to this day. So some of them I've actually wanted to buy, but it's either the price wasn't right or it's because I know that I have a lot of bags already and I just know that buying some of these would just cause clutter in my closet. But yeah, these are bags that I'm really interested in and I would love to have them because I think they are actually very trendy. And if you are the type of person who likes to follow the current fashion trend, then these are some of the bags that I feel like you can get at really great reasonable prices for way cheaper. You can buy them and wear them today and you'll look like you're actually very in trend without breaking the bank. So as you guys know, the fashion trends right now are big bags, big slouchy hobo bags. We're leaving the mini bag trend and we are slowly moving on to the big trash bag s type bags. These are seen with the Chanel 22, the Balenciaga trash bag, and the Bottega Veneta Intrachato hobo bags. So I have six bags that I'm going to be sharing sharing with you guys. But the first three bags that I'm going to be sharing with you guys are actually in that envelope of the hobo bag trend. So with that, the first bag that I really love from the pre-loved market would be the Bottega Veneta belly bag. So it's kind of interesting because in the pre-loved market, there's actually two kinds of Bottega Veneta hobo bags that I see going around. There's the regular hobo bag, and I think this one was the one that really trended with celebrities. I don't think there's an exact name because online they just call it as the Bottega Veneta Intrachato hobo bag, but it's basically a thinner type hobo bag. And if you see the profile of that bag, it's thinner than the belly bag. Both are again hobo bags, so you wear them on the shoulder. But the first one that you really see a lot in the pre love market, it has more of like angular corners, and again, the profile is thinner. Whereas the belly bag, which is the one that I would really recommend, it's more of a rounder shape. The shape of the Bottega Veneta belly bag is actually more similar to the Jodi or the current hobo bags that they have right now in stores. So it's more of like a rounder shape. Whereas the first one, the regular hobo bag, has a more like angular shape. So I think the only reason that that one saturated the market more is because more celebrities wore that bag back in the 2000s. So if you google Bottega Veneta Intrachato hobo bag celebrities from the 2000s, um, that's the bag that most of them wear. But the belly bag, when I research, not much people actually have it. And I think it's partly because celebrities weren't wearing it that much back then. So the belly bag, I only stumbled on it because I guess I stopped the pre-love market very hard, but you will rarely actually see the belly bag in the pre-love market. It's more of the regular hobo bag from the vintage design. The belly bag is also from the early 2000s, so it is an old design and you can't get them anymore. But I think if you were to scour the market right now for either the regular intrachato hobo bag or the belly bag, I think that if you want to join the trend, I think the belly bag has more value for money and I feel like it's more fashionable to today's trend versus the regular hobo bag. So if you were looking for a hobo bag, I would definitely suggest the Bottega Veneta belly bag because it's so cute, it looks so plush, it looks so fluffy. It's actually very reminiscent to the current Jodi bags right now. So I think like if you want the Jodi bag but you're not prepared to spend that much, then definitely try going for the hobo bag because you can get it for way cheaper, way below the price of the Jodi bag bag right now so I definitely recommend the belly bag. So for the belly bag, the prices right now in the pre-love market, I think a good price would be around 760 US dollars to 900 US dollars. So I feel like that's a pretty good price range. Right now, the prices of the belly bag that I see online range about that price. So I wouldn't really recommend going above the 900 dollar price range because going over that, I feel like it's already too much. So 760 to 900, that's the price that I would recommend. But definitely, if you're patient enough and if you scour well enough, you can definitely get it at 760. 
60 US dollars and I think that's a fair price for it. Okay, next bag would be the Balenciaga City or the work bag and the giant hardware. Now, I did just post my Balenciaga collection video and you guys know I have quite a few Balenciaga handbags, but the Balenciaga City with the giant hardware is something that I have always been looking for. Whenever I look into the pre of market, I always look for the ones with the big hardware because that is very rare already. The bags with the giant hardware were only released for a few seasons before it was discontinued and turned into the regular hardware, which is what most of the Balenciaga City bags right now have. And I would say that through the majority of the Balenciaga City time period, most of the bags that have been put out are actually already with the regular hardware, not so much the giant ones. So I like this design because as you guys know, Balenciaga is already entering a new phase or they're going into a new direction when it comes to their designs with bags like the Leka Goal and the Neo City. And when they released the Leka Goal, I saw a very big similarity to the early 2000s Balenciaga, which really reminded me of the Balenciaga cities with the big hardware. The Leka Goal is very Y2K, and the city bag with the giant hardware definitely fits into that. It's very grungy. The giant hardware is just like, there's something about it that when they released the Leka Goal, I knew that the giant hardware would really match with the aesthetic of the Leka Goal bag. So for me, carrying a giant hardware bag right now has the same vibe that a Leka Goal gives. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, let me know. There's something about the giant hardware, it makes it so chill, it makes it like you don't really care. And that's the same vibe that the Leka Gold gives. Plus the fact that the giant hardware is very rare right now. If you have that bag, you won't really see people carrying it. Honestly, like right now, the few times that I've seen people carrying the Balenciaga with the giant hardware, I was like, wow, like that's a really nice bag. It didn't feel dated to me. For some reason, it felt like very nostalgic. It felt really cool. To me, it gave that really cool girl vibe that I don't really care cool girl vibe so that's why I really like the aesthetic of that bag right now. So for the Balenciaga City with the giant hardware, I would recommend the pricing of around 560 to 700 US dollars. My recommended price is a little bit cheaper than the Bodega Veneta belly bag because the Balenciaga City is they kind of saturated the market back then. The Balenciaga City was an it bag, so definitely a lot of people had it. And so the saturation of the Balenciaga City bags really lowered down the cost. So, so I definitely think that you would be able to find the giant hardware in around that 560 to 700 US dollar price range. If you get really lucky, you could definitely find the giant hardware at 560 at great condition. But yeah, if not, the maximum I would go for is 700 US dollars. Like the belly bag, there would be better condition giant hardware bags for higher prices. But for this bag, I would definitely say just stick within the 560 to 700 US dollar price range. Okay, the next bag would be the Givenchy Nightingale bag. Now this bag wasn't really in my radar until like two days ago, two nights ago. I don't know how I got into a researching the bag again. I think I saw it in the pre of market because usually in the past when I stumbled on it in the pre of market, I never really paid attention to it. But I think it's because of the Chanel 22 and because of the Balenciaga trash bag that just came out recently. Um, I think that's why when I saw it pop up in the pre of market, it drew my attention because definitely it has the shape of the trending trash bag hobo vibe. So for this bag right now, I would say it's a gamble because you're not really sure how long the trash bag slash big hobo bag vibe will last. Um, you, you're not really sure how long that trend will last. But you know the fact that Chanel and Balenciaga are doing sort of that same shape and style, I really think that the Givenchy Nightingale is similar to that vibe. It's similar to that like trash bag vibe. The Nightingale was made popular in the early 2000s again by celebrities, especially the All Sent Twins. I was never really a fan of them. So the Nightingale, I never really paid attention to it back in the 2000s. I was really just always a Chanel girl. So yeah, I never really paid attention to the Nightingale. The Balenciaga though, I did like in the early 2000s, but the Nightingale, I think I just brushed it off. For me personally, I don't really remember following celebrities who would carry the Nightingale bag. Or maybe I did, but it was so plain and simple to me that I never really minded it. But now, now that the trend is going towards that direction, the slouchy, uh, I don't care vibe direction, then I think that the Nightingale is definitely something to consider if you want 
to go for that look without paying the hefty brand new price tag of these brands that are coming out with their own versions right now because what like the Chanel 22 is like 4,000 US dollars plus plus and then the Balenciaga trash bag although who would really want to buy that is at around 1700 US so uh, rather than buy that just get the pre loved one I mean why spend so much for a bag that looks like a trash bag right so uh, my recommendation is if you want that vibe if you want that look which I really want that look honestly I'm not gonna lie I've just been going to the gym these days I don't really go anywhere so I really think that it would be a really nice bag to have in my collection to just carry to the gym and use as a dump bag so definitely recommended if you want to follow in the footsteps of the Chanel and Balenciaga trash bags for this bag I would give a recommended price range of 560 to 700 US dollars similar to the Balenciaga city bag because while the Balenciaga City bag is so saturated in the pre loved market, the Givenchy Nightingale isn't as saturated as the City bags, but it's not as nice design wise. I mean, you guys can obviously see like the Nightingale is so simple versus the Balenciaga City, so I think it's more of like a design wise thing. That's why it's commanding for lower in the pre loved market. Okay, now these last two bags are more of classic bags, not so much trendy. These are bags that I've seen in the pre loved market that I would definitely consider adding into my collection simply because of their design. So the fourth bag would be the Chanel Vintage Duma Backpack. I really love this backpack because its design is just so different and it's very vintage. This is a vintage backpack, I think even like late 90s. So it's definitely a very old backpack, but it's very popular in the pre-loved market. For some reason, you would see quite a few of these in the pre-loved market. That's why I always see it around, and every time I see it, I just think it's a really pretty bag. Because it's vintage, it's definitely considered as a rare piece, and especially with Chanel, anything vintage is already considered rare. But more than that, more than it being vintage, the design of it in general is just it's a really really good design not gonna lie also there's really good reviews on this backpack like they say that the leather is really thick it's basically like a lambskin leather but reviews on it like if you watch videos online everyone says that the leather in that is very thick and it's very durable and i just love how the chains are so chunky and because it's vintage it's also the 24k gold plated hardware i feel like carrying that bag as a backpack it's just a totally different vibe it's so vintage like you can really tell that it's vintage that even as an outsider you'd be like wow like that girl is either a collector or like a hardcore fashionista because only like real hardcore people know that bag or will go for that bag because it's a very specific era but what i like about it is that even if it's vintage you can still wear it up to today like there's certain characteristics or there's certain elements about that bag which make it still wearable even if it was made all the way in like the late 90s. The design I feel like was very ahead of its time because the backpacks that Chanel makes right now, they're kind of similar to that. It's the same mechanism, it's the same like flap backpack type with the chains. So uh, creating that design way back in the late 90s, I feel like that design was very ahead of its time for back then. For this backpack, the price range that I would recommend would be 3600 US dollars to 6000 US dollars. And the range is quite big because it is a rare vintage backpack. As much as you'd see a few of them in the pre loved market, they are considered rare, so a lot of them actually command premium pricing for their bags. That's why if you're lucky, you can find one at 3600 US dollars. And I think I've stumbled on a few back then, but I just never really pulled the trigger because I had different priorities for my bag. It was back when I was still creating my own collection, so I had different priorities. But yeah, I have run into the Duma backpack at 3600 but again, it could range all the way up to 6000 because of the rarity and the premium price that it's commanding. Because there are actually a lot of Chanel collectors as well who actually buy them at 6000 So, you know, supply and demand, some people are willing to buy because they are collectors. So that's why the prices range that way. But if you get lucky, definitely, and you work hard, if you're patient enough, 
and you uh, work hard just always checking the stores, then you just might stumble on one at 3600 so good luck to you. <laughs> okay, so next is a backpack and it's the Louis Vuitton Monstery in the vintage version. Now, I say the Louis Vuitton vintage Monstery backpack instead of the new version because they're actually very similar designs. Even back then, even before the new Monstery backpack was released, I've always thought of the vintage Monstery as a very nice looking backpack. For me, it's a very classic design. And when Louis Vuitton released the new version of the Monstery, I was like, this basically looks like the same thing. It had very few differences. It's basically the same shape, everything, because it's the same model. But the only thing they changed was the base isn't Vachetta anymore. It's the coated canvas. And then the clasp or the tab on the flap where you open the backpack. On the new one, it's now a magnetic closure. It's not like the old version where the buckle mechanism actually works. So I'm not sure what you call it but basically the, the leather tab with the buckle. The vintage one that leather tab actually works whereas on the new Monstery it's just a design aesthetic and then underneath that buckle mechanism it's just a magnetic closure. So it's easier to access that way because it's just a magnet whereas the vintage one you really have to unbuckle it and buckle it back in just to open the bag. But I think that for the price, because the price is way different, the vintage ones are way cheaper than the new version. So price-wise, definitely go for the vintage ones because it's basically the same design. And if you're just gonna be, you know, using it for the gym or whatever, I definitely say that it doesn't really matter because it's already beat up and yeah. For the vintage Monstery, I would recommend a price range of 560 US dollars to 900 US dollars. Again, pricing depends on the condition. So at 560, you might get darker Vachetta, and then at 900, you might get like newer or replaced Vachetta ones. So for this one, it's definitely up to you uh, whichever condition you prefer. And finally, for the last bag, it would be the Chanel Easy Flap in the Soft Caviar. Now this one. This bag I wanted when I didn't have my flap bags yet, I think. But I've always already seen it in the market because it's very similar to the flap bag shape and style, basically. So the difference of the Chanel medium flap with the Chanel easy flap is that number one, obviously the easy flap is just the seasonal flap and the classic flap is obviously part of the classic and timeless collection. So the easy flap has definitely been discontinued long ago. I don't think it's as vintage per se. I'm not even sure if it was like early 2000s. I'm gonna try to research what year it came out. But yeah, I don't think it's a vintage bag. It's fairly newer, but again, discontinued. Now what I've always liked about the easy flap is that it has most of the characteristics of a regular flap bag except it's cheaper. So one thing that I like about it is that aside from the flap that it has, when you open it up it has a zipper inside. So if you're concerned about security then definitely this bag is for you because when you open it up it doesn't have the double flap but instead has a zipper. That one feature alone makes it very secure and then the second thing that I like about that bag is that you can actually crossbody it. So I've seen it in person in a pre-love store way, way, way before um, and I tried it on and it's actually a really good bag for crossbody. The one I tried on before I think was a medium size but the medium size is a little bit bigger than a medium classic flap but definitely even with that size you can wear it as a crossbody and you know our gripes with a medium flap you can't wear it crossbody so that's why i really like the easy flap and then for the cons i guess it's not as structured again the name is easy flap and the soft caviar so in the name alone it's very soft so it's kind of more pliable than a regular flap and it doesn't have the mona lisa pocket at the back if that's something that you're looking for but everything else the usability wise functionality the regular classic flap and the easy flap basically have the same functionality so it's just more of like the pricing and the design where it's kind of different and obviously like yeah that's the only thing that makes the other pricier than the other so definitely if you're looking to get your first classic flap and you can't buy the bullet yet I would definitely recommend the Easy Flap because it's a really good alternative if you can't get yourself to spend that much money on the classic flap yet. It's basically the same function. And honestly, had I stumbled on one when I had the money for it before I got my classic flaps, then I think I would have definitely bought that first. But yeah, when I first stumbled on it in the shop before, I didn't have the money yet. So it wasn't the time for me yet. But yeah. 
it's definitely cheaper now in the pre love market. So for the price range of this one, I would recommend around 3200 to $5,000 US dollars. Again, wide price range. The 3200 would be ideal, but I see some going for as much as 5 k So if you're a smart shopper, I'd definitely say find a 3200 one and a little bit higher. You can go a little bit higher if you want so you're able to save and get the classic flap look for much less. But if you're purchasing it for collection purposes, then yeah, I see some going for as much as 5k, but no more than that. Because I feel like more than 5k, you'd already be entering the classic flap territory. That's basically the price range that I would recommend for the caviar easy flap. So there, that was all for my pre-love bags that I'm obsessed with video. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope that you guys got a thing or two with regard to like forecasting the trends and being able to get pre-loved or vintage bags and styling them to match today's trends. If you guys like this video, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button down below, tell the YouTube algorithm, and if you want to connect with me on my socials, it's at Trish DLF. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you could, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!